Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the On Track Whiteboard Series. I'm Mark Forbes, and today I'm going to try to demystify ECAD, MCAD formats for you. And if you have worked in the industry for even a short amount of time, you know two things. It's important to share uh, electrical and mechanical systems so that they fit together when they're integrated. And number two, you know, it's kind of a pain in the neck. And let's see why it is and where we're going. So I have a timeline here that will help you envision when these things happen and help keep me on track. Um, so I'm going to start in prehistoric times before 1970 uh, because it's important. So the first MCAD system was put together in 1963 by Lockheed and it was strictly for drawing uh, aircraft parts. In fact, it was called electronic drafting at the time. Uh, it was really good for the time and what it did, it made uh, so much sense that Lockheed eventually uh, commercialized the system called CADM, Computer Aided Design and Manufacturing, and then sold it to other aircraft manufacturers. Importantly, the output of that system was either paper or microfilm, and microfilm was simply so you could store it more compactly and then you could make a print whenever you wanted. In 1970, several companies were now using CADM, and so the military stepped in and said, let's have a standard interchange format. And that first format was called Aegis. And it was very specific to mechanical parts, very specific to aircraft parts, and also military. So this was not a very compatible format for other systems. And in uh, just a couple of years after Aegis came out, the first electronic program came out. And it was basically just a drawing program that allowed you to do schematics. The real um, PCB layout tools began to appear in the mid 80s. Uh, one of the first ones called Protel. And today that, that program is now called Altium Designer. So in about 1980, there was concern that uh, everyone had their own proprietary format. And if I wanted to use another system, I might have to grab a, another format and learn it. And so there was, there was a push for some standardization. And IPC came out with STEP. Uh, and I, I call it phase one. It wasn't called phase one at the time, but that's going to help us understand it. So STEP, one of the big points of it, it's a neutral format. It's not, it's not managed by any company that is making ECAD or MCAD systems. The problem with STEP is it always sends all the data. So even if you change a capacitor, it's going to send the entire data back and forth. And you can imagine what happens. As your systems get bigger, these files become unwieldy, unwieldy and large. And uh, that created a problem. Because as you know, from 1980s to the future, systems continue to get bigger and more complex. Uh, so uh, one company in the early 90s came out with a different format called IDF, Intermediate Data Format. And the primary reason for IDF was to shrink files. And they did this by doing all of their 3D uh, representations as blocks. So there was no detail in the blocks. You could see where parts were. You could see how tall they were. But you couldn't even tell what kind of a part it was. It was just a block. So the weaknesses here is the models are just blocks on a printed circuit board. Uh, it works great for transferring files fast, checking roughly to see if, if everything fits. But it is weak in the representation of the 3D models. So about 1998, STEP was updated into what I'm calling phase two here. And the primary enhancements were they added a lot of applications for aerospace and electronic applications. But they did not really address the file size too much. So we're now covering more industries. We have more specific applications. But we're still dealing with huge files that have to be passed. And if 
you were an engineer at that time, you know that it could take overnight to send a large project. And that's basically how they operated. You, end of the day, you hit send and you hope when you came in the next morning that it was all sent across and you could operate it on. So parasolids were introduced by an MCAD company in about 2008 and the primary goal was to solve the two problems that we had. The file size and better 3D representations. So parasolids Unlike STEP, which I didn't mention here, but STEP models are faces. So it's, it's like gluing cardboard together to make your model. Parasolids use fully solid models. And because of that, we have smaller file sizes than the STEP. Parasolid is still native to some e MCAD tools, and now it's being adopted into a number of ECAD tools, and Altium Designer happens to be one of those. But the solid models correct another problem, uh, which is if you had an error in your data, you might get a 3D model with one of the faces missing, one of the interfaces uh, having errors, and you'd have to resend all that data. With solid models, it, you can't have that because the model represents the entire part, and they look pretty much like a photograph of the board when you're finished. That's important. So in the last few years, STEP has been updated twice. And phase three was significantly aimed at making smaller file sizes. Phase four updated a number of the apps within. And significantly, the 3D and 2D apps were uh, optimized for both performance and file size. And you can see we're, we're, we're getting to the point where um, w we can just about do this at will in real time and get excellent models. So that's, that's how we've evolved, what the formats do, what the, the weaknesses might be. And uh, hopefully at this point, I think you have a little bit better understanding of that. And if you found this video interesting, would you share it with your colleagues? Please check the like button as well. And we're always open to new topics. So if, if you have something that you'd like to see explained a little more uh, deeply than you have seen it, drop us a line and we'll include that in the hopper for the future. Thanks for watching.